Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday morning trading room. Uh, the market's just opening up now. And I'm following in particular here the NASDAQ market. I've also got the E-mini S&P and crude oil up, but please feel free to request any market which is of interest to you. Strong move out of the open. Uh, Pre-market, you can see we got a little bit of a a buy signal here across the board on the Eagle. The Hawk had a little first micro macro cross going, late filter entry signal here in the uh, Falcon. And a nice hard edge bounce. That's the number three signal here in the Raptor. So for those of you who are early risers or on the East Coast, there was a nice little opportunity. Normally, I'm not all that interested in pre-market trading, although very often uh, we're going to get some reports about an hour before the North American Open. That can bump the market a little bit. So after a quick run up, we've kind of slowed our progress. Wow, they're pushing hard right out of the gate. That's crazy. The E-mini also pushing up air, but not quite as uh, aggressively as the NASDAQ is. Well, if the buyers are going to make this a buyer's market today, then uh, we should see a little bit of a pullback through here somewhere and another attempt at a rally. Just to blindly buy in here is going to make stop placement 
near impossible. You know, let's say we just hit the buy market button, not saying it wouldn't work, but where are you going to put your stops? You're going to put your stops way down here. That would be ideal or certainly below the low of the morning, still a long way away. Trade forecast are saying we should be in trend mode for most of the morning. All right, well, that's good news. We'll see how that plays out.
Well, still a very strong bullish push. No sign of them slowing just yet. Looks like we're going to have a bullish kind of day, at least. That would be my guesstimation at the moment. It takes its time this way. It's always nice to have uh, a little music or something going <laughs> so you don't feel like you're pressured to do anything. I don't know if you guys can hear my headset. Here we go, we get a little Alan Jackson going. Hey Scott, welcome to the trading room. Scott says I'm the new guy. Okay. Um, for all you new guys and girls, uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of how I have the charts organized. Uh, here on the top left I have my Hawk Micro Scalper, the top right Falcon Swing Trader, bottom left Eagle Trend Trader, and the bottom right, of course, is the Raptor. Uh, the markets I'm following on this monitor are the NASDAQ. I also have the E-mini S&P and crude oil up, but please don't hesitate to request a market if there's something that you are following and you would like me to take a look at or perhaps follow. I would be happy to highlight it for you. And of course, if you have any questions, type away. I'm sorry we don't have the audio interchange, but <laughs> just take your time, type out a question if you have any. Ooh, Paul killing it out of the gate. Nicely done, Paul. Paul says, I took a long at 627, just before the market opened, on a, uh, hit my 60 tick target at 641. So 20 minutes later, 60 ticks, that's huge. Nicely done, Paul, on a single contract. Oh, and that's on the 20 tick chart. So Paul was experimenting with a, a larger tick chart um, the other day. That's one thing about the Raptor, of course. It's a lot more tweakable than the uh, rest of the DTS system, which is pretty much a lock system. The Raptor you can adjust. Okay, Scott's got a question. Can you tell my buddy John how to turn off his doorbell sound? Hmm. I know, I get that one too. Uh, what I've actually done, 
And I don't know if you guys hear my system audio or not, but somebody said once that all my alerts, my audio alerts were coming through and people were finding it very annoying. So what I did is I went through my, my tools and I actually turned off my audio alerts. Uh, see here where it says sound enabled. And I switched that to false. And then I actually got rid of a lot of the sounds, including for the moment the doorbell sound. All right, so we're teetering here a little bit. Got a little bit of a double top type thing going on. A nice wide band. Uh, it's possible we're going to see the market retreat here back to the hard edge. And we don't, oh, this could be interpreted as an early number two signal. Now, oh, here, they're going to give me a second push entry opportunity. Now, again, you know, counter trend trades, I've been preaching to you the evils of counter trend trading in a strong trending market. And the other day I so aptly demonstrated why you should not do that. <laughs> but uh, hopefully today we'll do a little bit better. Very often if there is a quick run up out of the open, uh, the market may make a little bit of a reverse before the next run higher. So this would be just a short term little counter trend trade. I'm taking advantage of the second push entry. The second push entry simply means we allow the signal to engage. We see where the market flinches and then we enter below or above in the case of a buy order. Now, why am I looking to short here? Well, this is actually an early number two signal. A number two signal, the counter trend signal, has two components to it. Uh, first, because it's counter trend, there has to be a trend preceding it. Secondly, we need what we call a test of the extreme. In this case, the extreme would be the high. And a test simply shows us the market's inability to continue higher. And as a result, we would anticipate a move the other direction. Now, this is not, you can see the, the way this test of the extreme played out, the Raptor did not recognize this as a completed number two signal. Now that it's getting a little bit more drawn out. We're going to see another retest of the high. Perhaps the market will turn at that point and the Raptor will print a number two signal, kind of confirming what we saw here early on. This is my just in case order. And this is aggressive. This is a very aggressive posture on my part. Because the market is looking bullish out of the gate. I'm not looking to be greedy here though. Uh, the target for the counter trend trade is always the hard edge of the trading band. But I'll see if I can, if they do head lower, if I can't sneak a profit about halfway down.
Geiger counter was pulling hard here to the short side. Oh, now they're getting a little bit of buying coming back. But when it pulls, when the dial pulls hard to one side or the other and stays there, that shows you that the buyers or sellers are trying to load up. You see how the sellers are loading up here? Or were? Let's see what they got. Well, at least they didn't slip me on the entry. That's good. struggling this is why we need to keep the stops above the swing high in fact you could probably even peel them back a couple of ticks from there still but hopefully hopefully the sellers will come in you can see we hit the support line right on the number look at that uh, notice the next support zone down here near the hard edge of the trading band Sellers coming back with some pretty aggressive selling now. Could you guys hear my uh, headset? Could you hear the music when I had it playing just a moment ago? I never know. No, no music. Okay. Well, at least I won't annoy anyone with my musical selections. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Steve heard it. Mercury Blues. Yeah, Alan Jackson. Or are you cheating? Did you see my uh, my player? <laughs> Oh dear, they're really liking this support zone here at 59.27. Not really making any gains to the short side, which is not good for my position. We should see one more attempted break here, at which time I think I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive with my stop loss.
got lots going on here now. We're just kind of in a little bit of a sideways rut as the buyers and sellers try to tip the market one way or the other. Not looking for that much out of this trade. Maybe gravity will take over and it'll pull itself down. Oh, okay. So um, John writes, my system placed a number two short at 653 or so. What setting do I have different than you? All right, we'll let this trade close out and then we'll just review the settings. It's not always, um, you know, sometimes it's mine that's off. Not uh, Everybody always assumes that there's something wrong with with their system, but it's very often mine that's different. All right, let's see here. All right, that's all you get. We'll bring the stops in above that little swing. I do have a bad habit of adjusting my stops early. Uh, sometimes to my, well, not to my hurt, but I'll stop out prematurely. I just did that recently on a very nice bean oil trade. And I had going an end of day trade. I took a break even tank just before the market made a huge move in my favor. Oh well. That's trading. <laughs> Welcome to the world of trading. Okay, I'm speaking of finagling my stops too quickly. There's my break even. I'm just going to force the trade to break even. It's probably going to head lower from here, but what concerns me a little bit is the initial uptrend. I know the buyers are going to show up here sooner or later. And I have a feeling the next time they show, they might push back a little bit harder. All right, so let's take a look here now at the Raptor settings. About the, well, the only thing that I've changed on mine relative to the default is here, the signal parameters SE, that's the soft edge signal, that's the number two signal. The default settings will say extreme retest sensitivity, 1.01, I've changed mine to 1.25. The higher this value, the more number two signals you will produce. Higher values make it less sensitive. And thereby you produce more, more signals. Lower values make it more sensitive, more discriminating. But uh, that's the only change. Everything else is on the defaults. And I'll refresh it here and we'll see. You see, it's uh, 
I think we had a number two signal print around here somewhere and it erased that one on the reset. The signals, of course, are, are prompts, they're clues that now is the time you should be doing something. See, like here we have a hard edge bounce forming. So where the system is saying, hey, you may want to pay attention to this. Okay, well, at this point, now we take a look at setting up the trade. Is it something that we can afford to do? Where will our stops go? Will our stops go you know, below the low of the morning? Uh, will they go below the last swing? If I try to put it below the last swing, no, the system says, no, sorry, Eric, that one's out of reach, given your account size. So if I'm really, really keen on taking the trade, well, I'm going to have to place my stops a little bit closer, maybe below the low of the morning. Oh, see, system says, no, Eric, that one's, that one's a little too rich for you as well. So maybe this is a signal I just have to sit out. Not all signals are uh, are tradable if you don't have enough money to do it. That's the whole point of having the trade manager, of course, is that you can control your risk. So another smaller test of the extreme now and we may come back here with yet another uh, cell signal not really um, a strong market one way or the other today Okay, so it does appear as though the market is going to try to head back here to the hard edge. We did get a little bit of a bullish push, but no follow through on it. So right now they don't seem all that interested in, in buying, at least at the moment. So there's another number two signal. It does appear as though they're going to try to push back here to the hard edge.
can see that block of selling going through right there. Paul, Paul says, uh, oil inventory in 25 minutes. Uh, crude inventories have been pretty lackluster of late. But we'll see what happens as we get a little closer. Wow, maybe that early run right out of the open, maybe that was the move of the morning. Things may be getting a little bit more bearish now, maybe. You can see we have another big sell spike go through here on the Geiger counter. The sellers starting to load up a little bit. We should see one more attempt by the buyers to recover this early trend. And if they can't do much with it, well, then it's probably going to be a full on bear market.
think what uh, the market might be waiting for is to see how prices respond back here toward the low of the morning. Uh, the hawk already getting bearish, as is the falcon here with the trend change signal. Eagle right into the hard edge, of course, and whenever we encounter the hard edge of the trading band, we do anticipate some sort of reaction. Floyd says the YM's getting some legs, starting to move. So, we're fairly bearish here on the Hawk and Falcon. Eagle just slightly bullish still. The band is still bullish, even though price is trading below the band. The Raptor working a possible trend change signal. The, the clouds are starting to cross. We don't have a complete cross yet, so we don't have the full number one signal. The buyers do owe me one more move higher. I'm just not sure whether I want to try to buy into it. If nobody's, well, we'll see how far they progress. If nobody's going to try to rally the market, well, then we may as well get short.
got some double dots here now on the, or had a double dot on the Falcon. Macro pullback now on the Hawk. Raptor clouds turning over a little bit more with the number one signal, with the cloud crossover signal, of course. Uh, the clouds need to cross. That's step one. Step two, the market needs to pull back into the cloud. And then the market needs to kick the price back out of the cloud. That's when we're going to get our, our number one signal. Right now, we're still an early number one because the cloud's not completely crossed over yet. Yeah, Paul says there's some pre-market resistance around 59.12 for the NASDAQ. Holding them up a little bit. If you were anxious to get into a trade, we do have a macro pullback signal here on the on the hawk. So the macro pullback, everything stays in sync except the micro line, and you produce a sell signal. Uh, the challenge here is going to be risking the trade. Where do I need to place my stops? Stay out of trouble. Well, there's a little bit of a crest in the macro line here. Certainly a crest in the micro line. So. Hopefully that would be far enough away. The Falcon working a possible late filter entry signal hasn't completed yet, but the way the late filter entry signal works, the filter goes out of sync, comes back into sync. However, the trend line never, ever changes color. Similar to this right here except this is a buy signal. The filter goes out of sync, comes back into sync, trend line never changes color, and you produce a buy signal. You can see it tends to be a pretty reliable signal with some decent follow through to it. So the trend line still red, the filter already out of sync, but no signal producing just yet. And the Hawk trade here holding off. So maybe, oh shoot, there they go. I was going to change my profit scenario. There we go. And what I'll do is I'll put my break even down here near the lows. I'm, I'm going to attempt to run this one out a little bit. I know I said I was going to stop doing that, but uh, again, the challenge on this trade is the stop placement. I have a little bit more confidence on the direction. I think the market's going to probably try to trickle lower. However, um, that's the, the bigger trend. Short term, it's not out of the realm of possibility to see a little bit more of a pullback here.
Okay, so any possible late filter entry here on the Falcon has been spoiled by that green trend line. And here's that reaction I was talking about. I'd have to hold on to this for a while. Play with the crude oil market here a little bit. Crude inventories coming out shortly. And a lot of times what I'll do around crude inventory time is I'll take advantage of the OCO function and just bracket the market. Well, uh, the big range is up, up here and down here. Oh, and I'm going to use a stop limit. I'm only going to give them a couple of ticks on the entry. Uh, remember when you use your OCO function, these orders are live as soon as you put them on your chart. If we traded up here to the median line a little bit more, I'd be a little bit more comfortable just buying above the primary resistance and shorting the primary support. I guess I can use the secondary support for starters. Uh, you'll need to make sure that you have a stop a strategy in play. The other th way you can uh, trade the crude inventory report is to actually let the report come out first. And within about 30 seconds to a minute, the market will make a range. It'll, it'll make a tight little range, and then you can bracket accordingly. About a minute to go. I think I would prefer a buy to a sell.
Okay, any moment now we'll see this Geiger counter go a little bit crazy, and these figures here will, oh, there we go. You see, we started to get some hundred orders flying through there. And just uh, look at the volume swell in the marketplace. Very little reaction to the pricing itself. Wow, really? Is that all you got? Okay, so I can probably bring my stops in here, enter above the high or the uh, primary resistance. Doesn't look like the inventory report bothered anybody. It didn't catch any traders by surprise. All right, we got a little bit of a short trade going on. What I'm going to do is I'll hold the stops above this little swing right here. Give it half a chance. Right now the market wandering a little. Gonna get ready with the ultra aggressive bar high low stop strategy. Come on, give me one more push. We'll get ready with a profit order. They don't seem all that interested. Usually when the inventory report is this way, if, it, if it's not quiet, you may as well just leave it alone. Crude oil, not nearly the market it used to be. It used to be very, very active, very volatile. Now it just doesn't do much. Okay, well, we'll leave that alone. Try to get that to at least a break-even position, maybe even a profit. Uh, how are we doing here on the hot trade? Well, the hot trade's working out nicely. Oh, there we go. We're getting a little traction now. Perhaps time to move into a more aggressive stop. 
trades at break even. Uh, Dad's asking, where is the profit target? I deleted the profit objective on this one, Dan. You see, I changed my target to zero, which means I've got 100% on the runner side. Just going to try to take this one out a little bit further if I can. And I'm going to go now with move to a bar high low strategy, which is going to be even more aggressive. I'm not prepared to write out any hiccup here, so I'll take a premature uh, stop out if the market starts to reverse. Uh, Scott asks, I was looking at the Forex calendar to watch for crude news release. Where do you look? Um, well, there's a couple of places you can look. Indicator Warehouse itself has a an economic calendar at the bottom of the page. It's not very well highlighted, but you'll get uh, some news events here. Forex Factory is probably the best one. And that's the one I tend to go to. So Forex Factory, seven, and you can set your own time zone. So this is set at Pacific time, uh, crude inventory report. And you can see the red ones are the important ones, orange, a little less important, and the yellow ones, so well, not really, who cares? <laughs> Uh, so that's kind of the best one, I think, to watch. Don't tell Adam I said that. So I'm getting a little hiccup in the in the hawk trade here, but that's all right. Still worked out, took a nice little profit on that. While that was going on, I do believe we had a Raptor signal print. Oh, it didn't print, but you can see it was still a number one signal. Uh, this is why it's important that you get used to recognizing the signals apart from the prompts as well, because sometimes the market conditions will be such that it doesn't suit the programming 100%, but the market conditions are still there. So we still had a cloud crossover. The market pulled into the clouds. The cloud pushed the market back out, produced the signal. That is essentially a number one signal. It's what in the room we would call an early number one, because technically, Let me find you a nice looking number one signal. Technically, the number one signal looks like this, where the clouds are fully crossed. This had just a slight little pullback prior to the signal printing, but that's your number one signal. The number one signal, you know, again, it tends to be a pretty reliable signal. We will print a number one signal now that the clouds are fully crossed, the next signal to short will also print a number one. But we're now bouncing off the primary uh, support line, so I'm wondering whether or not we're going to see a little bit more from the, from the buyers now. Okay, good to know. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff writes uh, Finviz, F-I-N, 
viz.com is another good website for reports. Uh, for you Americans, that would be finviz.com. All right, so here now the number one signal on the Raptor. Sorry, I'm a little bit late on this one, but we'll sim it anyhow. I tend to try to get into a trade earlier rather than later. So if I have an option between this signal here and this signal here, I will usually try to take the earlier signal. The reason is uh, logistics and trade management. If I get into this signal here, I've got a little bit of room to do something with my stops, maybe take profit if, uh, before I encounter the primary resistance line. If I take the signal at the line or very close to the line, you can see I may have to ride out a little bit of a reaction before um, I can do anything with my stops. So that makes the trade a little bit more difficult. As a rule as well, for those of you using the support and resistance suite, I don't normally like to take a, a trade right on the line. I'd much rather have the signal print below or above. You can see here printed below, here printed below. This one printing right on the line. That's just so neutral. Okay, so we're back to the hard edge now. We should see a reaction here. We might actually get a, uh, a number three signal on the, on the rafter here. That would help push the market a little bit lower. Overall, we're a little bit balanced.
well, we're just kind of waiting. Oh, there's a first micro macro cross higher. Working a possible trend change here on the Falcon now. Uh, back into the hard edge, of course, on the Eagle and the Raptor. So the buyer is making a, a very decent rally of it, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, how much follow through we're going to see. At least not yet. I'm not sure yet. Sending Ninja support a question. By the way, folks, you know, if you ever have uh, technical issues with your Ninja platform, or I can certainly help you with any DTS or Raptor related questions, they won't know about those things. But things like, how do I turn the doorbell sound off? Or how do I resize my chart, you know, even something as basic as that. Uh, they've got a really good FAQ section. They've got a really good forum that will answer a lot of the basic questions, but if, certainly if you don't find an answer at the forum, their support is very good. I've only had to deal with them a few times over the years, but they have always been prompt and have always solved my issue. We've got a little bit of a mixed bag going on here at the moment. The buyer's pushing back against the sellers. We're left with a rather balanced market. Uh, you can see trade forecaster saying we are in swing mode, scalp mode coming up in about 10 or 11 minutes time. So it's likely the market could kind of end up drifting a little bit more sideways as a result, maybe. Well, missed one trade, did well on another. Just kind of... holding our own through a rather dull market for the most part. Normally, we see a lot more volatility in the stock indices, especially the NASDAQ.
so we're back in one of these neutral zones. You can see we're pretty much dissected by the hard edge of the trading band. And we could end up going either way from here. The Hawk and Falcon already getting a little bit more bullish. The Hawk, of course, with the first micro-macro cross and even a macro pullback already. Uh, the Falcon did complete a trend change signal right here. Not a lot of follow through on it just yet. Oop, there's a number three signal. I'm just going to, oops, sorry, sorry. Let's just punch into that one. So I was kind of, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I was waiting for that hard edge bounce, looking to see which way the market's leaning. The E-mini S&P uh, taking a little bit of a downturn. And I'm hoping that we get a little bit more bearish follow through off this. This push lower. There we go. Come on. All right, so we hit the break even trigger. Um, we 
should be able to sneak enough out of here to get to our profit target. It looks like the market's going to challenge the lows of the morning or the lows of the day. And they may even try to slip lower, but you know what? I'm going to be happy to, to take my profit. I'm okay with that. Um, as you can see, very often after we hit our high probability profit objective, the market gives us a little bit of a reaction. Um, I think the overall trend today could be down, but I'm not sure this is the leg that's going to do it. Uh, there you go. You see the buyers fighting it back a little. Well, not bad. We uh, had a, a few very nice little trades. Not a bad day overall. Just trading single contracts, but looks like walking away with just under three hundred dollars per contract. So. A pretty decent morning. All right, gang. I'm gonna button up shop. We'll see you again tomorrow. If you are trading this afternoon, hmm. I think the buyers owe us a move higher. You know, we saw that big rally out of the open. I don't think they're necessarily walking away from that. I think we can see another big push or attempted push on the part of the buyers. Um, don't be surprised if the rest of the session just ends up going kind of sideways, though, building a little bit of a trading range. Don't be surprised if we get stuck within between 59.02 and 59.22. That's a decent enough range to trade, but I think you can expect sellers to show up up here and buyers to come in down here. Stay away from the middle. That's going to be no man's land. All right, boys and girls, I will see you again tomorrow. Have yourselves a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day here in the Pacific Northwest. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.